water is the medium that makes life thrive on this planet. The most fundamental unit of life is a cell. And a cell is simply nothing but a bag of water, a droplet. In nature, droplets behave in interesting ways, like this little droplet that acts as a refractive lens as it bends a beam of light, or another droplet that traps and moves tiny physical objects like this ant. Droplets can even bounce off of lotus leaf without wetting its surface. Inspired by the beauty of water and its fundamentality to life, I have been investigating how to program droplets of water and how this impacts how we do biology. Hi, I'm Udayan Umafati. I'm going to talk about how we can combine modern material science, physics, and solid state electronics to do programmable water droplets and how that's going to change how we do biology. I started by replicating 19th century experiments of a physicist, Gabriel Lipman, where a droplet changes its shape as you apply an electric field. As you can see here, a little lentil-sized droplet expands and collapses as you apply and remove the voltage. Now, if you increase the potential and rapidly turn on and off tiny squares on a grid, you can move this little drop move back and forth. I programmed this droplet to control them, how precisely they move to perform this delicate motion. And then I programmed it to move another, another drop around another droplet to go around each other as if they were dancing. The code allows for precise control to perform delicate moves, come together, and eventually combine. Now, let's take a step back and look at a biology lab, also known as a wet lab. A typical biology lab has a six-foot wide table with biological reagents and samples stored in tubes, bottles, and plastic tray. But I want to point out an essential tool used in a wet lab, a pipette. A pipette is nothing but a tool that transfers small volumes of liquid. Now, a biologist in a single experiment transfers measured volume of fluid from a storage container to a reaction container and disposes off the tip after each and every operation. And this manual procedure is tedious, and even the most experienced biologist in a wet lab commits errors. And a recent report shows that 60% of errors in a wet lab comes from human mistakes. And the use of these pipettes produces massive amounts of hazardous trash in the form of pipette tips. Globally, we use 4 million pounds of plastic to produce pipette tips alone. And 70% of this goes into landfill. Now, wet lab procedures are not restricted only to research and laboratory settings. Doctors, law enforcement, drug discovery company, all mix and move fluids. A procedure that's central to their work is called an assay. An assay is nothing but an analytical method that involves the detection of a target entity or to measure the effectiveness of a molecule or a chemical of interest. And usually, some of these assays have hundreds, thousands, or even millions of operations where you move, mix, and agitate fluids. And the current industrial solution to this is to replace a human pipetting with a robot. Now, the problem with these robots is that they still use pipettes. And machines which use pipettes are expensive and wasteful. The pipette tips have to be replaced for every single operation. And in a drug discovery company, a single pipetting robot can use and dispose over a million pipette tips in a week. And the result of all of this waste is a single blood test in the United States costing $1,500. And a drug discovery company spends more than a billion dollars in discovering one single drug. How do we bring down the cost of healthcare and healthcare testing from $1,000 to $10? 
if we really have to bring healthcare testing to the 7 billion people on the planet, we have to bring down the cost of healthcare testing economically. We have to cut down the cost of genomic engineering and drug discovery. To give you an idea of where this is all going, I want to introduce an essential piece of equipment used in complex processes. Typically, in a drug discovery company or any other uh, institutions, a pipetting robot will dispense samples of biological fluid into a micro well plate. Essentially, this is nothing but a plate with wells which can hold sample. And over the years, we've moved from 96 to 382 to 1500 micro well plates. We are moving towards more and more complex biological processes which require very high throughput liquid handling. We will need a million sample well plate for the next generation of biology. And notice how the size of the plate has remained the same, but the sample that's being manipulated is reducing. We are seeing massive reduction in the volume of the fluid that's being handled. When I actually worked for a synthetic biology company, I, I built a robot which manipulates small volumes of liquid to put it into one of these micro well plates. And even though one of these robots had only about 100 connections, it took more than several weeks to put, to put together this machine. On top of that, once in a while, a valve used to break or a bottle used to explode. These machines require a human supervisor to make sure they're running continuously without any accidents. Mechanical machines with unreliable pumps and tubes and valves do not scale to a million well process manipulation for the next generation of biology. Now, if you look back at history, we've moved from one simple operation to billions of operations in a very familiar industry. That's electronics. We moved from ENIAC, the room-sized computer, to a client-sized chip. This transition enabled us to go from a few thousand operations to billions of operations. The cost of computation came down from thousands of dollars to just a few cents. And today, it's free. We can apply the same principles of scaling in electronics to biology. The state-of-the-art liquid handling technologies are like the ENIAC. They are massive and expensive. They require valves, pumps, and tubes, and they have to be mechanically put together by hand. And this does not scale to various operations economically. By creating a solid state device which does not require any mechanical connections or hand assembly, we can bring the complexity, we can bring the miniaturization to million sample manipulations on a single plate. Combining biology and solid state electronics can drastically reduce the cost of biological testing. On one such solid state electronics device that I created, you can move and manipulate tiny droplets of water with biological samples. For a chemist or even for a biologist, mixing two tiny droplets could mean triggering a chemical reaction. In fact, you can even agitate them to perform mixing. Now, the size of this particular droplet is comparable with that of a little lentil but physics shows that we can manipulate even smaller droplets. If you think about it, we've already been using electronics to heat, cool, and analyze various materials in addition to just this particular piece of technology that I'm showing you now. Now, automating, moving, merging, and mixing and analysis of uh, these little droplets could mean automating entire biological protocols. Here, I'm showing how you can move and mix large number of droplets to perform complex biological protocols. And this particular procedure is called a serial dilution, where you're creating solutions of various concentrations. And a biologist essentially designed this particular experiment first on a computer, and then compiled, and then executed it, much like any other operation that you would do on a computer. And biologists can now think of biological protocols not as physical experiments, but as virtual entity, a program. 
Now, in the 20th century computing era, we had the tool to program information in bits through electronics. Starting from a few hundred mainframe computers, the scaling of integrated circuit led us to everything that we have today. Millions of personal computers and billions of, uh, and billions of connected devices. Biology is the most complex machinery that we know of. And in the 21st century, we are beginning to see the ability to program biology, the most complex machinery. This capability is going to open up new frontiers. And I believe the future of biology is programmable. Thank you.